there is a tendency on the right to try and latch on to what ifs or counterfactuals and alternative histories. And I think the reason for that is that people are trying to cope with how horrifically terrible everything has become. While living in the past is an unhealthy thing for anyone to do in any real context, I think, it's hard to blame people. Because a lot of things are getting worse, and at least politically everything is terrible. The most poignant counterfactual that people latch onto is Nazism and an Axis victory in the Second World War. There are several reasons for this. The first is that the Second World War and the oppression and evil deeds done by the Nazis are a key founding myth of the modern regime. The second is that they associate numerous positive and healthy things with Nazism, such as traditional sexual mores, pronatalism, national pride, free speech, support for law enforcement, opposition to immigration, and even Christianity with Nazism. This list of things make you a Nazi is almost infinite, and most of these good things are in clear contradiction to the actual beliefs of the Nazis themselves. A third reason is that any white advocacy gets slandered as being connected to Nazism, and that follows George Lincoln Rockwell's bizarre political antics and opposition to the, to the anti-segregation movement. As such, people often bite the bullet and will say that they are Nazis or that the Nazis were not so bad. And that is because, in their mind, anything to the right of Kamala Harris will be condemned as Nazis anyway, so there's no point in resisting it. Another is that because Hitler has become something of a Satan figure in modern progressivism, so any jokes about Nazism or any interest in Nazism is a historical event is an ultimate taboo, right? Doing something as simple as playing for the Germans in Hearts of Iron, that's a rebellion against the ruling order, right? Uh, making jokes about Hitler, Balloon Hitler, and Aqua Teen Hunger Force, that's taboo, right? Uh, even learning about uh, Nazism and what they believe, why would you do that? Why would you want to learn that? That's taboo. And so a lot of people, especially in formative years, when they're trying to push buttons, they end up being interested in the Nazis. That being said, Nazism sucks and it's dead. And it can't be brought back and even if it could, why would you do so? Because in America and the Anglo spirit at large, it's a foreign ideology. It was an ideology of German ultra-nationalism. And that doesn't apply to us or any political context in America or the Anglo sphere. It doesn't apply to any countries other than Germany and Austria. And of course, out of 20 neo-Nazis, maybe one of them is Austrian and zero of them are German. There are more Polish and Russian neo-Nazis than there are German ones. Other than cope, interest in counterfactuals are just being transgressive for transgressive sake, then why do people identify with Nazism or say it would be better if the Germans had won World War II? And the reason is, is that they believe that the liberal allied states um, of the Western powers were always on this trajectory towards their current degenerate collapsing state, their disintegration that we have. That the liberalism of the United States, the United Kingdom, the French Republic, Canada, they're always on that trajectory of ultimate moral and national disintegration. So if Germany had won or had imposed its will on the states of Western Europe, then there would be no mass immigration. There wouldn't be no any widespread fornication. There wouldn't be legitimization of homosexuality and a decline in religious attendance. I think a problem with this kind of view is the reality, if you go back and read everything, is that the, the Allies were real racists, right? France, Britain, Belgium, Holland, these were empires, colonial empires. And the United States 
also had ra racial segregation. In a lot of these countries, during World War II, they wouldn't take in the Jews that were uh, refugees from Germany, right? And a lot of people in World War II in America said that they rather lose the war than segregation be abolished. Hmm. And I want to say this too, Nazi race science has nothing to do with what is now called race realism or by its opposition now or more accurately at that time called physical anthropology. All of this association between Nazism and race realism and opposition to non-white immigration to the West is an after fact fabrication made by liberals. The Nazis were completely disinterested in IQ and intelligence research in both the qualitative and quantitative data aspects of it. Their race science was mysticalist in nature and it began with trying to find that the Germans were superior from the onset and would never budge from that position. They weren't trying to measure different groups as different groups and compare their traits to each other. Instead, they invented a fictional Aryan Superman, which the Germans were the descendants of, and they ignored the clear similarities between the various ethnic groups of Ger uh, in Europe to the Germans. And they denied their similarities and <laughs> greatly exaggerated the very minute differences and said that the Slavs and the, the Slavs are subhuman and the Germans are superhuman, right? A problem with this view, likewise, is that Nazi Germany never existed in a world where other countries were doing the evils of mass immigration, widespread fornication, limit, leg, legitimization of homosexuality, and a decline of religious attendance. Because Nazi Germany perished in 1945. And while I do think it makes some sense that the Nazi Germany would have been opposed to mass immigration from the third world, because, you know, Nazi racial science, the other three I'm not so s certain about. The Nazis took a blind eye to fornication and teen pregnancy within their summer camps. Uh, the widespread legitimization of homosexuality and other alternative sexualities is only downstream from a decline in religion and the liberalization of heterosexual norms. And keep in mind, the Nazi regime um, of, you know, 33 to 1945, that would have to last as a coherent entity until today. So just because the Nazis won the war doesn't necessarily mean that the Nazis would still be around in 2023, right? The Soviet Union won the war and the Soviet Union is not around anymore. Now, let's get to, to an important point that's really important here. Nazism was opposed to Christianity, and to some sense, because most of the right, at least in the Anglosphere, is Christian, I feel that needs to be a deal-breaker for anybody who would be sympathetic to the Nazis. While it is true that the Nazis made some statements early on that were somewhat positive of Christianity, the, t the entire trajectory overall of the Nazi state and its relationship with Christianity was a negative one. The Nazi government forced all Protestant groups into a single state recognized church, or at least were attempting to do so, the German Evangelical Church. The Nazi confidant Ludwig Müller took charge and tried to merge the various Protestant factions with those of the Nazi state and he wanted to do things like merging all the religious youth or organizations with the Hitler Youth. Under Müller and his successors, there was a movement to incorporate Nazi ideology into Protestantism under the German Christian Pressure Group. The most radical proponents of the German Christians adhered to positive Christianity. The so-called positive Christians adhered to various Nazi racialist viewpoints, 
but also attempted to push a Neo-Marcionite Christian faith. A Marcionite faith is one that denies the reality of the Old Testament, denies what you could say are the Hebrew context and origins of Christianity. So they wanted a Christian faith devoid of Hebrew heritage, in which de-emphasized or, or sought to outright eliminate the Old Testament. Such a, a view of Christianity is completely antithetical to Christianity, right? Um, we, should, we shouldn't view Christianity as some kind of Semitic thing. Christianity is the ultimate evolution and fulfillment of those prophecies. Christianity is not inherently some kind of golem of the Jews. The Jews are not the rightful successors to the religion of the Old Testament. The Christians are. Despite the Nazi party's power in the totalitarian system, the plan to turn the German evangelical church into a state church collapsed rapidly with the vast majority of Protestant bodies leaving or protesting. The German Christian pressure group and his pet project Positive Christianity were ultimately abandoned. And the relationship between the Catholic Church and the Nazi Party was much more strained than between the, Cal the Nazi Party and the Protestant churches. German um, Catholic clerics were opposed to the ideological race science of the Nazis. Um, the Nazis' practice of negative eugenics and what was perceived as pretty, you know, you can't blame them. They weren't at the forefront. They're exaggerated in retrospect, but there definitely were neo-pagan tendencies within Nazism. So Nazi symbols such as um, those seen on the SS uniforms were explicitly banned from Catholic church services. And I'm going to mispronounce it, though, but the 1937 encyclical Mit Brendner Sorge was published with a great deal of controversy because it condemned Nazi race science. The, ca the Catholic bishops had to transport this um, epistle or encyclical to the churches in secret. And the priest, for the most part, read it from all the pulpits on Palm Sunday, 1937. And the church believed that there would be a horrible crackdown on them. And they did it anyway in full knowledge that this crackdown was likely. Um, throughout the war and, and uh, German control of Germany and Austria, a lot of Catholic priests and religious were imprisoned. And some died of execution when Germany occupied Poland and started to colonize it. Um, Polish priests were targeted excessively and many were killed. <clears throat> the most strident policy of Nazism, which the German Christians, both Catholic and Protestant, opposed, was the execution of the innocent disabled, the innocent deformed, the innocent mentally ill, and costly sick people via forced euthanasia. This policy led to the deaths of tens of thousands of innocent people. It was introduced in 1939 and was known as the T4 program. This policy led to a widespread protest by the Catholic and Protestant establishment. In 1941, the Nazis had to actually abolish it publicly, although it did continue um, secretively. The protest occurred in a state which is usually described as totalitarian and within wartime conditions. I just want to say this. The killing of innocent people for no reason beyond their physical and mental defects is morally repugnant to Christian morality. And it should be noted, again, I want to say this, that the Nazis gave it up because of the pressure from the Christians. I don't want to get bogged down by talking about the Holocaust too much in this video, but it should be noted that all those dramatic scenes we see in American war movies about the Germans lying and being completely aware of the mass killings of Jews and other minorities 
and they're just lying to the American soldiers, and the soldiers get really mad at them and say, you knew the whole time, there's no way you couldn't have known. That's all ideological fiction. That's all bullshit. The German people opposed T4, and that was the starting point, the building blocks of the Holocaust. The Holocaust could only be conducted in the atmosphere of wartime under extreme secrecy because there's no way that the German people, even as Nazis, would have signed off on it. The vast majority of the German people were completely unaware it took place. Its extreme secrecy and associated lack of documentary evidence, that's the basis of the Holocaust revisionist controversy. So I want to say the killing of innocent people deliberately that are not a threat is always wrong and the crimes against humanity which the German state committed against Jews, Gypsies, Poles, Czechs, and various other Slavic peoples are detestable. That being said, the German conduct in the war in general was far from just and many unnecessary crimes were committed by the SS and the regular German armed forces. Many, and I want to say this too, many other powers in the war did a magnitude of war crimes. The Soviet Union and Japan did a lot, but so did, did the United States and the United Kingdom and even France. So dis discussions of German war crimes in isolation, I don't think that that helps us because the concurrent crimes done by their enemies kind of negate that when you're discussing this. So I think it's much more important than talking about the injustice done in the conduct of the war that we should focus on why the war happened and that it didn't need to happen. The entire focus of Nazism and the basis of the ideology and its worldview was revanchism in the face of defeat in the First World War. Nazism sought revenge upon internal opponents which they felt had undermined the war effort and led ultimately to the revolution in November of 1918 which overthrew the Kaiser and established the Weimar Republic. The revolution and its accompanying naval mutiny meant that Germany had lost the war without ever being formally invaded and after have won a great victory against Russia. These internal enemies or elements within Germany were socialist and communist who, as a matter of fact, were, were disproportionately ethnically Jewish. But by 1939, all these forces within Germany were subdued all other political parties were banned other than the Nazis and the German Jews were relegated to second-class citizens with little or no political rights because of the Nuremberg Laws. Outwards, revanchism was also very important to the Nazis and this needed to involve the creation of a massive war to seek revenge upon Poland and France as well as other countries. And all, the ultimate goal was expansion eastward, either disenfranchisement or expulsion of the Slavs from Eastern Europe under a policy of Lebensraum. The war lust inherent within Nazism and its outwards revanchism came to fruition in the Second World War. There is no way you can say that this war was not manufactured by Germany and that Germany was forced into making this war. In the three years prior to the war, Germany had won concession after concession after concession without a single shot being fired. Germany rearmed the Rhineland. They annexed the Sahar. The, there was a unification with Austria. The annexation of the Sudetenland in the Munich Agreement. France, Britain, and Italy all refused to intervene against Germany on behalf of Czechoslovakia in the Munich Agreement in 1938. And then six months later, Germany breaks the agreement and takes outright control of Bohemia and makes Slovakia a puppet state. Germany had broken the Munich Agreement 
which was made as a concession against German for German expansionism. And this was all within six months, I want to say again. Then a few days after they annet they annexed, or for all practical purposes, annexed Bohemia, they then forced Lithuania to abandon Mermel. Between 1933 and 1939, Poland and Germany shared largely cordial relations. Then following the conquest of Bohemia, which was clearly German aggression, um, Poland, of course, got a little afraid of Germany. And Germany set about trying to force Poland to concede the Polish corridor, the strip of land separating the main body of Germany from East Prussia. The Polish corridor was always an ethnic Polish majority. But prior to World War I, we know that there was a, a sizable German minority there because of the Prussian policy of colonization, which the Second German Empire, the Kaiser Reich, did as well. Following the collapse of the Second German Empire and the establishment of the Weimar Republic and the new Republic of Poland, the corridor was entrusted back to the Polish state. And in, so let's go through this. In 1910, the corridor was at its peak, 42.5% ethnically German. Then after World War I, in 1921, it had shrunk down to 18.8% ethnically German. And by the time of the outbreak of World War II, or just prior to it, it was below 10% ethnically German. The vast majority of ethnic Germans left for economic reasons and were no because they were no longer supported by the German state as colonists and they wanted to return to Germany for better economic reasons because Germany, compared to Poland, especially at this time, was an economic powerhouse. Even during the Great Depression and the hyperinflation of the 1920s. While the Germans were somewhat discriminated against in Poland, their discrimination was substantially less than the Poles had undergone under the policies of Germanization, in which the Nazis stepped up and made even worse once they took control of Poland. It should be noted that the push to force Poland to concede the handing up handing over this corridor came in the v heels of the Munich Agreement. I can't stress this enough that the Germans broke the Munich Agreement. They intentionally forced the war to happen. It's all on them, right? <laughs> Poland understood the concession, that this concession of territory and a vital economic access to the, to the sea would probably force Poland into becoming at best a vassal of Germany, but probably more likely into a protectorate as it happened in Bohemia. As such, Germany knew that pressing for this territory was a clear route for war. So Hitler was the architect of the war between Poland and Germany. Like, you have to be a retard not to see that. It's possible that had Germany not pushed so hard in such a short period of time, or they had pushed for the corridor and never annexed Bohemia, then... You, or then you, the United Kingdom and France would have not guaranteed Polish independence and it would have not been a wider Second World War. So say if Germany waited a few more years and invaded Poland, <laughs> after all this anxiety, after they broke their own peace treaty in March of 1939, then maybe England and France wouldn't have intervened and there wouldn't have been a Second World War and Germany would have had a free hand. But you know what? I don't think so because I think that Germany wanted revenge on France too. And ultimately, Hitler wanted to invade the Soviet Union and establish Lebensraum. Now, personally, I think that Lebensraum, like the Holocaust, would ultimately not been that supported by the German people. They wouldn't have had a stomach for those atrocities. But the fact of the matter is that the Nazis are responsible for the invasion of Poland and the Second World War. And had they not been as aggressive, they might have even been able to invade Poland sometime later without intervention from France and the UK and had a much smaller war without, you know, this whole global World War II thing. 
And you know what? Maybe even <laughs> had there been no guarantee, um, with no no pact with the Soviet Union or not, an isolated Poland without any allies in the outside might have just given up the corridor because they would have sensed defeat. Maybe. But anyway, there, there. In fact, yeah, I know there was a massacre of ethnic Germans after Germany invaded the war. After Germany invaded Poland and the war started, the Poles massacred ethnic Germans. But I don't know. All these Nazi defense videos are like, oh, look, Bloody Sunday happened. Obviously, the Germans were in the right. Well, you know what? Poland was invaded, and then the massacre happened, right? Oh, and what happens after Bloody Sunday, after Germany wins? Oh, they're going to kill tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Poles. <sighs> so, let's get this straight. The Nazi party manufactured the war after it got this unparalleled string of victories, after it unified Germany, after it rebuilt its army, after nobody would have assaulted Germany on purpose. The Great Depression was ended by the Nazis and they returned prosperity and economic stability. The Nazi party had internally squashed all opposition and they were super secure. It should be noted too that the Soviet Union, <clears throat> even through the early parts of World War II until the fall of France and the German invasion of the Soviet Union, was a pariah state. Everybody hated them. Even during World War II, the Western Allies almost started a war with the Soviet Union to try and give support to Finland. So, had Finland or the Baltic states or Poland or Romania been attacked by the Soviet Union without the context of World War II, vast parts of Europe would have given aid to these states like they actually did in world war ii in the case of finland or they would have outright intervened against the soviet union germany had no reason then was basically secure if the soviet union tried to expand then germany would have easily found allies and international support then but no because they wanted revenge they wanted revanchism the Nazis may have been reviled in Britain and France, but there were substantial portions of the political elite and populace who thought the Nazis were better than the Soviets. The Germans, by allying with the, with the Soviets' co-belignorance, ended their pariah ship and ultimately allowed for the expansion of the Soviet Union, as we know, into the Baltic states. It allowed for the Winter War and the secession of Bessarabia to the Soviet Union from Romania. Germany's lust for power and desire to subjugate the Slavs and possibly eliminate them in the German plan Ost is what caused World War II to happen and the deaths of tens of millions of people, including millions of German citizens and civilians, right? It was the Nazis' fault. Why Italy was definitely aggressive in states that couldn't defend themselves back, like Ethiopia and Albania, Mussolini was no idiot. He would not have started a Second World War. The Soviet Union was only able to take territory pragmatically because it's packed with the Germans and because of all the chaos that was going on because of the wider war at that time. If they had been aggressive, as I said before, then the entire world would have been in opposition to them and there probably would have been a great call for a grand crusade against the Soviet Union. Japan, of course, was super belligerent, right? They invaded Manchuria and then they invaded China and there was a second Suno-Japanese war, obviously. But Japan wasn't going to lash out against the Western powers unless they were already subdued, as was the case in history with the Netherlands, France, and, Brit and Britain. And they were only going to attack America, because if, there are, if they're going to attack Southeast Asia, and America was going to end up bogged down in the European theater, then they saw their chance. So, the reality is, 
The Nazis were the architects of the war. It was a war of their own design, and it was just as senseless and pointless as the First World War, and ultimately a lot worse because much more people died. The Nazi actions that caused that war resulted in millions of Germans dying, including from the Allied war crimes, yes, I'm fully acknowledging that, the terror bombings of Dresden and Hamburg and other war crimes, you know, other losses, the dead POWs in the concentration camps, and the mass rape of German women by the Soviets, and the killing of German civilians in Austria and Germany, right? That all happened. I'm not denying it. I'm not denying that they were victims of the Allies, war crimes. But the reality is World War II was a stupid war that the Germans brought on to themselves. And they lost a great deal of land and a great deal of their own people because of it. And they endured the greatest exodus of refugees in human history as ethnic Germans were expelled throughout Eastern Europe in revenge for the German aggression in the Second World War. The defeat of the Germans was pointless, and it was their act of aggression, and it resulted in the end of the division of Germany into rump states, right? You had West Germany and East Germany, and you had Austria after they reunified, right? Hitler had gross Deutschland, and it's still divided to this day. And this war resulted in what was one of those key German things that they wanted to prevent? Oh, the expansion of communism. Because half of Europe got dominated by the Soviet Union and communism for two generations. And a large portion of the German people were subjected to direct German rule, which they have not psychologically um, been freed of to this day. This humiliating defeat and the war crimes that the German people endured are not something to be proud of. They're terrible things that happened. If you're in the right, you don't want to get behind them. You don't want to own them. It's not necessary. It's idiotic for anyone into the right to buy into pro-Nazi stuff. Because Nazism is a smear. And when you bite the bullet and try to identify with the Nazis and lean in that smear, it's not going to help you. The Nazis were German supremacists who took a rather dim view of their German relative immigrants in the Americas. Their worldview is irrelevant to anyone who's not German. Their racial policies have nothing to do with physical anthropology and are pseudoscientific gibberish. They defined vast parts of other Europeans which includes most of my DNA, as being racially inferior. They were vehemently anti-Christian, and they brought an extremely unfavorable world down on themselves unnecessarily. The Nazis were a bunch of idiots, and we do not need to identify with them.